Hey guys, Brian with Curious, and today we'll be doing the video portion of our display comparison of the LG Nitro's AH IPS display and the Samsung Galaxy S2 Super AMOLED Plus display. Um, pretty much we'll be comparing the black levels, the whiteness, and the color accuracy and reproduction of the two displays. <clears throat> so no further ado, let's begin. Right now, I have both phones on their home screens. Um, the phones are uh, maximum brightness and uh, as you can see here I have a, a wallpaper called Starfield 3D Starfield uh, you can find them on the market if you search that but what I'm trying to display here is the black levels and the contrast ratio at those black levels so you can immediately see that on the, uh, uh, the LG Nitro's AH IPS display to the right the black is much uh, brighter and not as actually black as on the Samsung Galaxy S2. Um, the Super AMOLED displays are uh, well known for their very deep black levels and their resulting uh, great contrast ratios. So as you can see, um, it's not terrible by itself here, but you can still tell that you know it's an LCD screen that has brightness up and the black is more of a, uh, it's not so, doesn't look like a true black. Uh, whereas on the Galaxy S2 here, uh, the bezel and the screen are actually almost the same amount of blackness. Uh, it's not emitting nearly any light as much as you can see on the uh, LG Nitro's display. And the resulting effect is um, it's much more vivid when you see these stars coming at you, uh, even though the whites may not be necessarily as bright as the whites on the uh, Nitro's display here. Um, moving on, let's check out how, how well the whites are reproduced here. Uh, if we go to the browser here, I have Google's homepage loaded up, and um, as we all know, that's supposed to be just a straight white color. Uh, as you can see, though, in the cam from the camera's point of view, uh, the Galaxy S2's display is significantly uh, more off, off color. It's more blue, uh, and it's also dimmer. Uh, you'll notice that well, that is because the uh, OLED display technology, uh, as time goes by, I believe it tends to shift towards a more blue-green hue on the when you're trying to display true white, and um, so that's very apparent here. Uh, whereas on the, it's actually when you're actually using the um, the phone, it's actually kind of hard to tell just by itself. Um, but when you have it next to a display like the uh, LG Nitro's, it is quite clear that it is not true white. So for those of you who are concerned about that, that's what that looks like. Now let's move on to the uh, color reproduction here. And... Uh, actually we can do some more white and, white and black slash gray testing here. This is the same, same website I used uh, on the article. I'll post a link to that in the video description. But as you can see, one sec, let me size this correctly. Ah, okay. So on the Galaxy S2, uh, it does a pretty good job of, you can see that there's supposed to be a clear distinction between the top bar and the bottom bar and the middle bar and it's uh, quite apparent at the top, um, a little bit, a little less apparent but it's supposed to be more difficult to tell the difference towards the bottom but you should each see a different uh, shade of uh, gray square. And for the, oh what happened here? For the LG Nitro, it does equally as well. Um, as you can see, it's quite apparent where the two, the three bars of white and gray are. So I, I mean, minus the whole uh, blue shift slash um, slight graying of the or bluing of the white display on the Galaxy S2, they both do pretty well in showing the uh, the differentiation, the different uh, white levels and gray levels there. Uh, where you'll see more of a difference, however, is in the black levels. Um, we'll start with the Nitro here. Uh, let me zoom. Let me focus this. Uh, one sec, guys. There we go. So, as you can see, um, the LG Nitro does a pretty good job of distinguishing all these different levels of black here. Um, it might not be so apparent in the video, but it's very clear on the bottom that these are all different shades of gray. And and obviously it's very apparent on the top as well. But in the Galaxy S2, when you have, 
when you're actually taking a look at this, uh, you can't actually tell that there's a separation on the bottom shades. They all look like part of the middle black bar across the bottom. So it loses some of that uh, color resolution um, because the, the blacks are so dark. It, uh, you can't really tell when a dark gray is different from a black. Um, the top bar is uh, much more apparent, probably closer to the bottom line of grays and blacks here. But in the video, you can't nearly tell as well. So, I mean, that's a trade-off you get with the deeper, darker blacks. It has a hard time reproducing the lighter ones. <clears throat> and uh, so there's another shadow comparison right here. And in this color, uh, color comparison, as you can see, there's almost no difference. Um, looking at the display itself, you can just barely make out a difference here. But on the Galaxy S2, uh, is, you can definitely see that line down the middle with these two squares of color. And it's much more apparent with the naked eye. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on there with the shadowing of, for colors, but the Galaxy S2 seems to be able to reproduce um, those colors more accurately in that sense. And let's move on to the next test. We'll watch a video. I actually haven't previewed this yet, but hopefully we can find something we like here. All right, guys, now we're back here and I'm playing this uh, video on both the Galaxy S2 and the Nitro. And on the bottom we have the, uh, I mean on the bottom we have the Galaxy S2, on the top we have the Nitro. And showing these greens, the greens are actually very vivid on the Galaxy S2. Um, almost what some people would call fake, because the color reproduction is a bit, you know, overly intense, but it looks good in my opinion. Um, however, as you can see, there's some, the Galaxy S2 definitely has some trouble reproducing these darker areas of detail um, of the satellite or the whatever is on the screen right now. As you can see, it's almost black right in these corners when it should actually be displaying some pretty obvious detail. And that's pretty apparent when, um, in this video, when they're trying to display uh, the stars, these star clouds on the top right, uh, it's not nearly as clear and much murkier on the Galaxy S2 as you can see right now. I'll, oh, close that. As you can see, just like a black sky here, whereas on the LG Nitro, it looks like you're looking at um, all these different like galaxies and stars and whatnot in the sky. Um, you can see the contrast ratio. The colors are a bit off on the Galaxy S2, I think. Um, that's just characteristic of Super AMOLED displays, though. H or I IPS displays, excuse me, are um, well known in the industry for having the best color reproduction, um, and are you know consequently a lot more expensive than displays like TN panels, but. Um, the Super AMOLED displays are also good in their own rights, as you can see by their dark contrast ratios. It's easy to see um, why people like them, especially on phone UI interfaces where having good contrast and crispness is very uh, favorable. In terms of video reproduction here, though, uh, I'm going to have to side with the LG Nitro's HIPS display. It's quite nice, especially with its uh, large 4.5 inch display size. But let's back out of that for now. Um, I think you guys got a pretty good look at um, both of these displays here. Obviously one is quite a bit older, uh, but the HIPS in its own right is not, is kind of old itself. It originally, probably most familiar with it in its uh, iPhone 4 Super Retina display variant. But um, I do believe LG made those displays as well. So. The HD resolution is also really nice on the uh, LG Nitro. Uh, you can see a lot more uh, content on websites. It, however, does make buttons a bit smaller, as you can see on the uh, bottom row of app dock buttons. So that might be a little more annoying, but I mean, it's. I think the trade-off's worth it. But um, I wouldn't be too worried for prospective phone buyers. You're gonna have a bunch of Samsung devices coming out, like the Galaxy Nexus, which has another, you know, a full HD display, 7, uh, 1280 by 720. Um, that again uses Super AMOLED technology, so we'll probably have to do a review of that and compare the two. <clears throat> but essentially, you know, the trade-offs you're getting, you're getting uh, more intense colors uh, at the cost of color accuracy, but you have. Uh, better uh, contrast ratios due to better uh, black levels on the uh, Super AMOLED display. 
Uh, however, the Age IPS display has uh, <laughs> better color reproduction, so you can get better details out of your, you know, your videos, your pictures, and whatnot. And obviously, here the resolution is better, so you can't really complain about that. But overall, both displays are great, and I don't think you can go wrong. So, good luck on buying your phones.